So I'm here with Keith. Uh, Keith Shin is SVP of Wholesale Architecture at Fidelity and a, a large open source user. I know you have thousands of developers at Fidelity. I know whole, Wholesale Architecture is a big position to have. Tell yes. us a little bit about what's involved in that. So it's really focused on uh, the infrastructure side of the organization. So network server storage, middleware database, big data and cloud functions. And so I have teams that basically provide the strategies around those. and. Then also focus on, I have a development team that leads uh, our cloud initiative, our private cloud initiative. Now Keith, one of the things I, I always remember from our phone conversations is you're, you're a forward thinker. So I know you've thought about open source for quite some time. Tell us a little bit about how you think about it and why it's impactful for you at Fidelity. We've started to change our, you know, we've always been a large consumer of open source software at Fidelity. Um, uh, we clearly have made a strong effort towards open source operating systems and the runtimes on top of that. Um, what's, what's started to change within our company has really been around our view about the integration that's there within the open source space and the quality of the open source code. And you know, I really believe that's because of the communities that's developed a, around certain open source uh, projects. And so, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, we, we're starting to view it as a more integrated solution. Right. Uh, part of that is because um, there's just so much you can do with documenting an API about how it works, and if people can actually see the software execute, um, it changes how they go about integrating. They make, they make better decisions about integrating the software. So we're seeing that uh, so they're going to take off. They're seeing the entire flow and, and, right. and, and we, through that. And we also see because of that, you know, there's no desire a lot of, in a lot of cases to go build a, a comparable solution. If there's something right. that's, you know, very reasonable in the marketplace or in the open source communities to, to use, people will just use it. And uh, so that's, that's the first part of our thought change. And the second part is around uh, viewing open source as a, really a, a way to attract the best talent within the organization. Right. Uh, so. We believe that there's a lot of things we could do, and the only factor that keeps us from um, delivering on some of these capabilities is the talent that we have within the organization. I mean, the numbers and things like that. And so, over time, we believe that uh, we need to have a position that will allow us to attract the, that talent within the organization. And open source is also a means of understanding who is a talented person, and also most of those people want to contribute back to a broader initiative. So you highlight a couple of very key points that we brought out at dinner tonight with the uh, revealing of the survey. And so did it resonate with you that Absolutely. we're seeing that virtuous cycle of talent that's coming in and Absolutely. So you, in a lot of ways, what a person's open source contributions will become more valuable than their resume, right? Right, right, absolutely. And. Um, not only that what they contribute in the way of software, but also to the community in that space. And you can start to realize, you know, what kind of person they were, they are, and how they will contribute to your organization. Right. So one of the things, of course, we talked about is that you know the good news is more organizations, more you know uh, enterprises like your own are starting to organize to contribute back. Yeah. Not just as individuals as enterprises. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're doing that? Yep. So we've absolutely done that in on particular projects. So in my space, we've been very focused on infrastructure components. And so, you know, in the past this has been unheard of for us as an enterprise company, but now we have agreements to contribute to a number of different projects. So most of them are um, in the cloud space, so yep. OpenStack, Open Compute, yep. uh, uh, Chef, yep. and the Open Networking Foundation are the yep. areas that we've been focused on at this moment. Uh, we have con we have more contributions right now in the Open Compute Foundation, uh, but we've done some in OpenStack and Chef. Great. Well. Uh, it's great to hear this, and so I'm going to use the opportunity to talk about some of the people who are not as forward-thinking as you. Obviously, as we were hearing, you know, people have got comfortable with open source now. Security that used to be a liability is now an asset. People view it as you know, more eyes on the code. So what would you advise others who are looking in similar positions to yourself to think about, and why should they consider open source first now? Hmm. So, you know, so the way I view it is, you know, this is really a time to market story, right? right. And 
Um, most of the companies are struggling with how we change as an organization to be more timely. Uh, you know, clearly what's happening in the social space, the mobile space, yep. are affecting the older legacy companies very dramatically. Um, and to that end, where our, our competition is coming from is changing dramatically. Right. So it was easier, you know, 10 years ago to understand who might, uh, uh, you know, come after our business. Yep. And um, so I know this is not necessarily exactly where you were expecting no, me to go with this, but, but, um, but clearly uh, what open source does for us is allow us to deliver capability much faster than what we've been able to do in the past with you know some 30 third party type solutions right and a lot of that is because the, there was not an incentive for um, usability across platform for right. third party solutions they wanted to enable the use of their solution for your platform and what we really are concerned with is not you know doing business with one supplier it's what tools make the answer the best answers for our customers right exactly and so um, in my mind that's that's the biggest thing that if you if you're serious about your competition you better be thinking about how you consume these kind of capabilities or you might be surprised that's yeah. the way I would state it I mean that's great advice and, and it's it's great to hear you you know speaking to the time to market issues and focusing on your customers and how do you get them competitive advantage or better products and services through the use of open source? Well, the part of it's time to market. The other part is what is expected changes day in and day out. What your what your cost structure changes. I mean, you cannot you cannot operate on the same expense line for the services you provide day in and day out. And clearly, in the in our business. You know that's one of the things that we always are focused on is how do we drive cost out of the transaction? Absolutely. Uh, because if we don't, somebody else will, and they'll claim our business model, right? Yeah. So this is fundamental to you. This is you know, all the way to the bottom line. Give us a sense of the scale of, of the number of developers that you you estimate are using open source with Infidelity now. Oh, there's thirteen thousand or so yeah. developers using open source within the space. There's fewer than that number contributing. Right. So. Of course. But but still, that's a significant number. And, and what would they say is the thing that they're feeling most compelled by? I mean, if you get down to the grassroots developer level, you mentioned that obviously they see it as you know a strong part of how they develop their resume. But what else is it that you think is important to them? So, <clears throat> so I would tell you that we're still evolving on that s subject a little bit. Um, the areas that are most forward thinking within the environment see how the integrations for things that are that are uh, uh, cursory to how they deploy and build applications are sort of taken care of for them yep. in an open source space yep. and it's it's more difficult uh, per se in maybe some other spaces and so you know if they want a continuous integration tool it's already built for certain right. run times if they want a continuous deployment tool they can consume one uh, if they want certain, you know, better testing or uh, performance testing, there's already tools built in certain areas if they consume certain products. And so it, it's, it starts to be, you know, how much do you want to do? Right. And so they, if they use these tools, it, it allows them to just, away. right, it's right. It, it yeah. allows them to not, to focus on what they need to deliver right. and less on all these cursory things that are necessary and important, by yeah, the way. But, but, but distinguishing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's very helpful. And, and that brings me to the, sort of the next piece, which is, you know, in the survey, we talked a lot about how companies are trying to use open source to gain competitive advantage. I mean, Fidelity has long been known as a, an institution that in the financial services world has innovated in many ways. Can you speak to a, a particular innovation that you think would, would not have been possible without open source? Hmm. Well, I mean, clearly a lot of our I don't, I don't I want to speak specifically certain sure, things because sure. that could... Uh, well, to the extent that you can. Yeah. <laughs> so clearly, you know, this, the transactional services and the analytics we provide to our customers today are, all are founded on some sort of open source technology. And uh, we could not provide those services uh, to them without it. And now, we do believe we need to change and we need to be 
become uh, you know even different in the future as a company. Uh, you know, this is not a steady state game. Absolutely. Um, but you know, I would say. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's as far as I'd go around that. That's that absolutely point. fine. Yeah. It's a great point to end. Now, let's do one last thing, which is, this is, of course, the future of open source. It's great to have had you at the dinner discussing that with many of the community here. What's your vision for what might happen in the next year in open source and what might be important to you? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> so it's funny how you've seen even, you know, not all open source is equal, by the way, uh, but I have seen the industry being uh, affected by the fact that, you know, open source is not all open. Right. You know. And so some cases you, where you have, I do believe there's a, a ben, advantage perhaps to having sort of a benevolent dictator yep. over a project. So you think about Linus Torvald yep. with Linux. I mean, having somebody at the head of that and directionally driving that project is why it's the most Absolutely successful agree. open source initiative ever. Um, I would say, we and I and I do believe that there is. You have to look very carefully at who's leading a certain open source initiative, and whether or not there is true broader contribution community within that space. Right. So things can designate themselves as open source and not Truly make themselves true all open source. Yeah. Well said. Uh, so, but having said that. I think everybody's getting that. Yep. And now the next question I have, or next thing that I think will be discovered in the next couple of years, is that there has to be monetization around some of this. And there, that's been a struggle for many open source projects right now. Yep. A lot of the times the reason why that is, is that the way they tend to monetize an open source product looks a lot like a traditional uh, project or right, yep. a traditional solution, yep. and I really think people have to become more comfortable with gaining uh, uh, profit on a project based on a looser coupling of subscription-based or something else. Indeed, which you know is sort of you know not um, it's not intuitive. It's not as easy yeah. for 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 people to make that transition. So, yep. but I think that's going to happen. What's going to happen is I believe uh, we're going to see some other successful projects that will start to teach the industry how to make this a profitable endeavor yep, and absolutely. it will start to give momentum around that because there has to be profit associated with these act activities as well. Indeed. Well it was encouraging to see, I think you will of course notice that Cisco acquired Sourcefire for 2.7 billion last yep. year and it, it proves the value of several things there, right. not just the code but the community and the contribution to the greater yep. mission for Cisco. Um, but you're right, I think that's an extremely important part of how we, certainly we as investors think about things too. Absolutely. And, uh, and certainly, for example, I'm a big believer in your view on you know, beneficial dictators. Uh, Dries in, in our investment, Drupal, uh, you yeah, know, that's with Aquia. Good is, point. Is a that's another example. good point. Yeah. Absolutely. He's, uh, and he's excellent at it, but it's, everybody's benefiting from it, yeah. so I think that's the key to it. Well, great. Anything else before I uh, leave no, you to enjoy the dinner? Thanks, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you again. A great, op great opportunity on my part. Thank you very much <laughs> for participating. Great <laughs> to have you here. All right, bye.